Hey guys, I'm John Setzler. Welcome back to the Kamado Joe cooking channel. It's that time of year again where people are starting to think about cooking that big prime rib roast for Christmas. So we're going to do one. I've got one that's been sitting in my freezer for a little while that I need to cook. So we're going to prep it. We're going to throw it on the Kamado Joe Classic and I'm going to show you how easy it is to do a beautiful prime rib. So let's get started. Okay, here's the star of our show today. This is a grass fed, it's about a six and a half pound prime rib roast. I bought the whole roast, but I've already taken half of it and I made steaks with it and did some other things. But I had this one tied up and had it in my freezer. So I thawed it out. It's a pretty good looking roast. You know, it's got some decent marbling here. And uh, this is the other end. So what we want to do first is season this guy. When you've got a cut of meat like this, that's this size, I like to season it in advance, especially with the salt. So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna put a, uh, a salt, pepper, garlic uh, seasoning blend down on top of this. And if you don't have a pre-made salt, pepper, garlic seasoning blend, you can just make your own, you know, salt, pepper, and, and garlic powder. And what I'm gonna do is just put a liberal amount of this on there. You don't have to worry too much about putting too much salt on a piece of meat this big. We're going to just get all sides of this thing coated up nicely with with this. And today, the salt, pepper, garlic blend that I'm using is Atlanta Grill Company's house blend. It's called uh, Himalayan Sherpa. It's really good. If you haven't tried that, you might want to. So. I'm just gonna, you can kind of get an idea of how much I'm putting on here. All in all, I will probably lay down a quarter to a third of a cup of this blend on this roast, and I'm gonna coat all sides of it. And after I get this coated, I'm gonna wrap it up tightly in plastic wrap, and it's gonna go back in the fridge overnight, but in my case, it's gonna end up being in there about, oh, 16 or 18 hours before I come back to actually cook this. And this uh, is kind of like a dry brine process that's going on here. That salt's gonna get to infuse a lot of this meat. And when that's done, we're gonna come back and I've got a wet rub process. So like I said, I'm gonna wrap this in plastic and it's going in the fridge overnight. Okay, we're gonna get this party started. I've lit a fire in the center of the firebox in my classic, and I've taken a couple of cherry wood chunks, broken them down into smaller pieces, and we're gonna put, I don't know, five or six of these smaller pieces here in the firebox, and we're gonna let our temperature today come up to about 250 degrees, and I'm gonna set both halves of the heat deflector in the low position, and then we'll set both halves of the grill grate in the upper position and I'm going to close the bottom vent down to where it's just open about an inch and I'm going to position the top vent here at about the first mark until we get up to about 200 degrees and then I'll adjust it down until we stabilize here at about 250. Okay guys our grill is almost up to temperature. I've taken my roast back out of the refrigerator as you can see it's still wrapped in plastic but we're gonna go ahead and make the wet rub portion of this. And what I've got here is a small mixing bowl that I've put about two tablespoons of paprika in. And here I've chopped up about a tablespoon. This is a very coarse chop of some fresh rosemary. And I've got another tablespoon here of some coarsely chopped fresh thyme. So we're just gonna put that in our little mixing bowl here. And then I'm going to add some olive oil to this, some extra virgin olive oil. Uh, maybe start out with about two tablespoons. And what I'm looking for is something that's just a thick consistency. And that, that actually looks about perfect right there. So I'm just going to mix that up. And then I'm going to let this uh, sit aside here while we unwrap this roast. Okay, guys, this thing looks perfect. That uh, salt pepper and garlic that we put on there has done its job. So what we're going to do now is just take this wet rub and rub it all over the outside of this roast on all sides. 
and this guy looks just about perfect there now so I'm gonna let that sit there for probably 10 to 15 more minutes or so until my grills up to temp it's almost there okay guys our classics up to temp and I've got a really nice peach or I'm sorry really nice cherry wood smoke roll in here so we're gonna toss this roast on and we're gonna put that thing to bed for quite a few hours I'm guessing at least four hours here I'm gonna cook this to an internal temperature of about 128 degrees I like mine to finish up around 135 so we're gonna let this guy cook several hours and like I said it's probably gonna be about four hours so I'll let you know how long it is when we come back okay guys we're right at about the three hour mark this guy's ready to go it's up to 128 internal so I'm gonna pull this off I'm gonna cover it with foil and we're gonna let it rest for about 20 or 30 minutes okay guys this roast is rested so let's uh, slice this guy open and have a look at it together look at that that is beautiful got a perfect pink cook all the way through and we get that through the indirect heat and the slow temperature this guy is easy to cook I want you guys to give this a try uh, it's very easy you're not gonna have any issues with it. it's as easy as cooking a Boston butt so that's gonna wrap this cook up but before we finish I want to talk to you about a couple more things about cooking these the way I've just shown you to cook this is definitely not the only way. You can cook that on the jotisserie if you like. Uh, one of the first questions that I expect to hear is why did I not put a reverse sear on that? Uh, and my answer is, is I just like the crust the way it comes out from that long slow cook. If you cook on the jotisserie, you get a tighter crust on that meat from the exposure to the direct heat but I don't think you get quite as even of a cook throughout the meat it's not going to be giving you that pink color edge to edge unless you really keep the temperature down if you want to add a sear to a roast like this what I recommend doing is letting that roast rest after it comes off the grill wrapped in foil for 20 or 30 minutes during that time preheat your oven to 500 or 550 degrees or let the grill come up to that temp and then toss it back in there for about eight to ten minutes at that high temp and let it do that if you do a direct sear like uh, right over the fire or on a soapstone or on a cast iron any of those seasonings those herbs that you've put on that thing they're gonna scorch and they're gonna get just a little bitter so anyway I just wanted to show you how easy it is to cook a prime rib roast and I hope you can find time to put something like that on your dinner table this Christmas. Until next time, this is John Setzler with the Kamado Joe Cooking Channel.